percent of value at Ripple, we're thinking much bigger than just cross-border payments. It's kind of like Amazon with rare books in the early days. Just this market happens to be a $10 trillion market. We are at a historic turning point. Said in the past that you are doing for money what email did for communication. It's moving the whole revolution forward. Got it. There's trillions of dollars parked around the world. RP. Is there a possibility that Ripple could take over Swift one day? Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So, so far, script. Let's get right into today's video. This is part two from yesterday. We are continuing the exposing the end game of USDC and XRP duo. And in today's video, we are going to break down it to the T, like I promised yesterday. First of all, I want to say I love every single one of you guys that watched yesterday's video because the quality was horrendous. I had some difficulties yesterday uploading, so the quality was 240. And it was, I mean, you can't even read the screen, but the information in here was very, very, very valuable. Uh, so if you guys just listen to it and watch it without really reading the screen, it is monumental. But you got to watch episode number one, part one, before you watch part two. And you know what I'll do? I will leave part one in today's video at the end. I will timestamp it. So if you don't want to watch the poor quality, Fast forward in this video, I, it might be in the 20 minute mark. I'm not sure how long this video is going to be, but I'll put part one at the end. But we're going to start with part two for everybody that watched yesterday. Let's get into it. So the videos we're going to go over today, they're not three years old. They're not four years old. They're five months old and three months old. And this is Tyrone Lobin. Head of Project Onyx at JP Morgan. Listen to what he says here. We're going to break it down to the T, and you're going to be completely mind blown with what's about to happen. Apollo, JP Morgan, and Wisdom Tree provided traditional and alternative assets to be tokenized. And in order to set up this fragmented environment, we had Onyx and Oasis Pro tokenize these assets on three different permissioned blockchain environments. We had a permissioned zone of the provenance blockchain, the Onyx digital assets platform, and the permissioned Avalanche subnet. And to provide connectivity between all of these different platforms, we implemented not just one, but two interoperability solutions, Axelar and Layer Zero. And to provide connectivity between all of these different platforms, we implemented not just one, but two interoperability solutions, Axelar and Layer Zero. Let's watch just one more time, but visualizing this. Apollo, JP Morgan, and Wisdom Tree provided traditional and alternative assets to be tokenized. And in order to set up this fragmented environment, we had Onyx and Oasis Pro tokenize these assets on three different permissioned blockchain environments. We had a permissioned zone of the provenance blockchain, the Onyx digital assets platform, and the permissioned Avalanche subnet. And to provide connectivity between all of these different platforms, we implemented not just one, but two interoperability solutions, Axelar and Layer Zero. And to provide connectivity between all of these different platforms, we implemented not just one, but two interoperability solutions, Axelar and Layer Zero. Okay, so we got Apollo, JP Morgan, Wisdom Tree providing tokenized assets, going through Onyx, Oasis Pro, and then subbing it out to Avalanche, Evergreen, Subnets, Onyx, Digital Asset Platform, and the Provenance blockchain. But in order to provide connectivity and interoperability, they went to Axelar and Layer Zero. And a couple months after Tyrone went on stage and talked about Axelar, Axelar and Ripple teamed up. And I'm going to break down what it means for XRP and what it means for Ripple. But just know that 2024, they're setting up something monumental that we cannot even imagine. And now just listen to Jeremy Allaire pretty much telling you that 2024 is going to be the tipping point and the addressable market cap, I mean, on a conservative side is $100 trillion. He's not even accounting uh, tokenized assets. We want stable coins to be something that 
your average household or corporation would, would hold on their balance sheet and know how to account for it, or financial institution is gonna use it as collateral or use it in a financial service. You need that legal and regulatory certainty. And once you have that, then these types of digital currencies can truly go mainstream. And, and, uh, if you don't have that, th they may be more limited in the markets that they can serve. But once you do have that, the total addressable market becomes the total size of the electronic money market, which is you know, over $100 trillion. All those things coming together uh, are going to make, I think, you know, 2024 an extraordinary year for growth in the utility of this technology. And, and uh, I think we're going to see um, significant scaling out in terms of the number of users but, that but are... But not that, yet. Mass adoption in 2024. You see oh, great strides being made. Well, it depends on your definition of mass adoption. I think we are going to see dramatic growth um, in, in 2024. Um, a lot of the things that are lining up in terms of um, the infrastructure, the usability, the standards, like there are just thousands of teams that are building on top of these things right now. Um, and so I'm, I'm more optimistic than I've ever been about the technology progress and what we're going to see in terms of user experience. So talking. when you get that combined, the UX, the infrastructure, and the legal clarity, that is the makings for tremendous, uh, tremendous growth. And the legal clarity, that is the makings for tremendous, uh, tremendous growth. He goes on to state that 2024, we're really going to see utilities start to scale and we're going to have tremendous growth with the regulatory clarity being in place as well. And XRP being the only digital asset with regulatory clarity. Come on. I mean, what don't people see here? JP Morgan will end up using XRP. This is a no brainer. I mean, you had Tyrone Loban, I mean, working at JP Morgan for over 20 years, telling you about Axelar and Axelar is going out and working with Ripple. To scale into the trillions, the integration between XRPL and Axelar need to focus on creating a seamless, secure, and efficient infrastructure that can handle the complexity and volume of transactions that come with such scale. And Tyrone stated this. Played out, but I think where USDC is going to hit a cap is going to be at scale. The role of XRP in this partnership is crucial as it could serve as the primary asset for liquidity, settlement, and value transfer across different blockchains and financial applications, leveraging its inherent advantages in speed, cost, and scalability. And now let's go over the duo. XRP can serve as a bridge currency across multiple blockchains, enhancing liquidity across the Axelar network. This makes it easier to move the value between different ecosystems by leveraging XRP. Ripple's established network of financial institutions and their existing user base of XRP can provide a significant boost to Axelar's adoption. Think about all the partnerships, all the institutions that are partnered with Ripple. Now, gates have opened to Axelar as well. As these institutions begin to explore and utilize cross-chain functionalities, the demand for Axelar services could increase, benefiting both Axelar's network and the utility of XRP across multiple platforms. And the role of XRP in this partnership is pretty significant. XRP is ideally positioned to become a preferred medium for cross-chain exchanges. Its role could expand significantly, becoming a default asset for transferring value between blockchains connected via Axlar's network. Through Axlar, XRP could be used in DeFi applications on other blockchains, significantly increasing its use cases and participation in liquidity pools, lending, borrowing, and yield farming. And with AMM around the corner, things are about to get very interesting. Beyond financial transactions, the partnership can explore new use cases for XRP in areas such as tokenized assets, NFT marketplaces across blockchains, and decentralized applications that require cross-chain interactions. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. They're all doing this quietly. I mean, take a look at this, for example, Christine Moy. Uh, she had worked for JP Morgan for 18 years. And now she is a partner at Apollo, head of digital assets. So, and she was doing the same thing, Onyx. She was working with Tyrone Lobin on Project Onyx, and then she went to Apollo. They're all interlinked. They're all in this together. 
They're building the infrastructure. They're all learning as we go. Here we have Project Guardian enabling open and interoperable networks. This is what they're referring to for tokenized future. And they're working with DBS, Ripple Partner, HSBC, Ripple Partner, SBI Digital Asset Holdings. I mean, that is massive Ripple Partner, Standard Chartered, Ripple Partner. They're all here. These are all Ripple Partners. And this is not made up. These are all facts. So with that being said, I do appreciate every single one of you guys. And we are going to go ahead and play the outro. And after the outro, we will have part one starting. We started building RippleNet with the thesis that crypto liquidity would eventually be able to support robust global payments, large payments. RippleNet was designed so that customers seeing the benefits of our fiat-based network could flip the switch to ODL once the market was mature enough. And this is exactly what's happening. Flip the switch. Uh, I think what we're building has, you know, it's solving a real problem. And I think all of the tokens, my advice to anybody would be, understand the utility if there's real utility and there's real value being delivered to a real customer there will be value in the token welcome back ladies and gentlemen so to our script let's get right into today's video with stablecoin regulation about to pass and be implemented ripple circle singapore uk jp morgan they're all getting ready to shift to the new financial system and ripple is going to have a major role in this and in today's video i'm going to show you exactly why and the breaking point is very close today tether faced restrictions in europe amid regulatory overhaul this is very important okx discontinues tether trading in the EEA ahead of EU's Mika regulation. This is a huge red flag because they got the word that USDT isn't going to align with the Mika regulation. And if you guys are familiar with Mika, here is the OKX posting saying Mika a regulatory leap forward for crypto, stating the adoption of Mika in the EU is an important to our industry as a new technological breakthrough. And Circle, they're on the same boat. Mika's impact on EU crypto industry and beyond. And Ripple welcomed Mika regulation as soon as their lawsuit got the clarity on XRP not being security. Now, they're continuing and working together as a group. Circle has their licenses in the United States, just like ripple does okay this is not found on usdt or xlm for example these licenses do not exist over there you see we're headed towards the regulatory landscape and everything is in line and they're ready to get everything going and we have circles non-us licenses in singapore and uk and bermuda what are the odds singapore uk of course Ripple, Ripple has their licenses in UK, Ireland, and same with Singapore. So they're moving as a group. And in today's video, you're going to see exactly what I mean with video-based evidence. These are clip-ups, all montaged together, but they're all in this together. And today, Ripple won the FinTech Breakthrough Award for having the best cross-border payment platform. I mean, come on. How people are so distracted right now with meme coins and just the markets, you know, people are uncertain where the markets are going to go. But people that have been accumulating and holding, we have seen nothing yet. I, I will tell you that right now. We have seen nothing yet. And the markets... Are about to witness fireworks like we've never seen before so now let's continue on to the video here which some of you guys may have seen but this speaks a thousand words now it makes perfect perfect sense because usdc is okay they got the pass 
And take a look at this. So Tyrone Lobin, he has been head of blockchain at JP Morgan for three years and six months looking over Project Onyx. And also Hyperledger Foundation board member for a year. Ripple is also a member of the Hyperledger Foundation along with R3, Visa, Walmart. You see this? This is a big, big group. Along with Accenture, Ripple Partner since 2014. DTCC, Ripple Partner, directly and indirectly. Hardcore evidence has been provided in past videos. And IBM. Same with American Express. And listen to what he says here in regards to Axelar. Ripple partnered with Axelar a couple months after. Okay, so this is very important. A couple months after this video. Apollo, JP Morgan, and Wisdom Tree provided traditional and alternative assets to be tokenized. And in order to set up this fragmented environment, we had Onyx and Oasis Pro tokenize these assets on three different permissioned blockchain environments. We had a permissioned zone of the provenance blockchain, the Onyx digital assets platform, and the permissioned Avalanche subnet. And to provide connectivity between all of these different platforms, we implemented not just one, but two interoperability solutions, Axelar and Layer Zero. So he clearly states to provide connectivity and to have an interoperability solution, they're going to be working with Axelar and now Ripple is working with Axelar. And to provide connectivity between all of these different platforms, we implemented not just one, but two interoperability solutions, Axelar and Layer Zero. And in the next video, I will break that down to the T, how those two entities go hand in hand and how it will drive demand for XRP. And now here we have the mashup, the OG mashup that is going to go down in history as one of the best made clips of all time is Mr. Tyrone Lobin addressing a pain point in the payment system and where they're headed towards with USDC and scalability. And we have videos dating back from two years ago. It's all been in the works. Tyrone Lobin video was just this year. Jeremy Allaire video you're going to hear was about two years ago. And Singapore was a couple months ago. Just listen to these guys. Just This is perfectly synchronized. And it, it, the ones that don't understand it, go watch my previous videos. This is much bigger than you could possibly imagine. But listen to Tyrone Lobin, Jeremy Allaire, Circle USDC CEO, Brad Garlinghouse. And what more can I say? We are at the tipping point. I know everybody is, some of you guys may be running out of patience, but I'm telling you the outcome to the demand that's about to approach to XRP and the use case behind it is incredible and history will be made. But listen to this. It needs to be played out, but I think where USDC is going to hit a cap is going to be at scale. The market, uh, sorry, the 24-hour volume for both USDC and USDT is like $25 billion or something. That's like 400 times less than what we do every day. Really close. I mean, USDC itself um, has, we've seen over three and a half trillion dollars of transactions directly on the internet between counterparties. And, and so um, if we can, you know, improve it with more scalable blockchain technologies like, you know, Brad's company uh, provides. So I think that USDC has, you know, 100% a place to play. I don't know that in its current construct, it can play at the institutional level. So when I talk about the $10 trillion that we're processing every night, more scalable blockchain technologies like, you know, Brad's company uh, provides. But when are you going to move into stable coins? Yes. <laughs> when? Yes. <laughs> more scalable blockchain technologies like, you know, Brad's company uh, provides. Massively scale over the next few years into many trillions uh, of volume and scale on a daily basis. 